Hello, Facebook Live. Hello, High Performance Coaching Community. Hello, YouTube, because this will be uploaded to YouTube as well. How are you guys doing today? We are on two of Manifest Masterclass, and I am like so blown away by how many amazing messages I've got and comments, and I love that you guys get this, and you guys are my people, and it just makes me so happy because... These are the most amazing conversations you can have, right? So when you're hopping on, say hello. So we are just going to be going live here in the High Performance Coaching Community, but if you want to watch this on YouTube on replay, um, we will post the link for that too. Uh, yay, day two. I love this. Yes, I'm so excited. Have you guys seen any synchronicities yet? Because I have seen so many that actually I laughed so hard yesterday. So me and Adam, we don't watch much TV. We have four kids. We got a business. We do a lot of things. We like the hockey stuff. Um, but once in a while, we're tired, so we're like, let's just start a show. And someone recommended the um, The Handmaid's Tale, and I started like, we started watching it, and right away they start going into like Bible verses about control, where it's like, blessed are those who suffer for the cause of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And like this show is wild, but it was what we were talking about yesterday. And I just look at Adam like. This is what I just talking about. He's like, that, that's crazy. I'm like, but of course, but of course. Um, hello, guys. Hello, Chris. Five, five, five. Yes, yes. I saw so many angel numbers. Uh, just pop in and say hi. Can't wait to watch the replay. Yesterday was fire. Love this in you. I love you, Katie. Hello, Lenny. I'm missing your names. I love you. I see you. Sometimes the comments go really fast. Hello, Debbie, Michelle, Chris. Hello. I'm um, really glad to be here. I'm so happy. We are going to have such an awesome conversation today we're going to talk about emotional intelligence we're going to talk about energetics we're going to talk about untangling our fears um this is the kind of conversation that i am the most excited to talk about because to be honest the things that always hold us back are our emotions are the fears all these energetic blocks that we have and for me this is the kind of conversation that really changed everything for me to really understand how to handle my feelings how to energetically align and every time i have conversations with clients who are stuck it is always these conversations that untangle the things. So it's gonna be a powerful conversation. Hello, Rebecca, hello, Amy, hello, Mima, hello, gorgeous. So just to remind you guys again, if you wanna enter the, hello, Haley, hello, beautiful, I still have 40 minutes left of yesterday's finish, but wanted to be here live, yeah. And if you didn't watch yesterday's live, that's okay. We're still talking about manifestation, but we're gonna go into the conversation about like emotional intelligence and you know, how to exit the old paradigm and be free and do all the things. So. Don't worry if you haven't caught all of it from yesterday. Um, hello, Carla. Hello, Jody. Hello, Helen. So what I was about to say is if you want to enter the draw, again, you just take a snapshot of this um, or you share the first video from yesterday or you take the graphic and just tag me on social media. We're going to do probably the draw, I'm thinking Friday. I will give you guys um, a lot of notice before that. So you guys get to win a tuition and it's going to be amazing. And then we can do a little bit of a Q&A too. So if you guys have questions, or anything else, we'll talk about it. Good morning, Jody. Hello, Carla. Hello, Kelly. Hello, beautiful. How are you guys? Okay, so let's talk. And yeah, and let me know in the comments because some of you guys are already talking about manifesting things and synchronicities. Let me know. Have you seen any synchronicities? Okay, so again, you can do the draw. We're gonna have this conversation today about our energetic blocks, our emotions, and some more about rewiring. Yesterday, what I had said is like, I feel like we are basically kind of navigating two different realities at the same time. It's like our soul is here, like playing in the quantum field from time to time. We're dreaming, we're visualizing, we have one foot in desire, one foot playing in the quantum realm. We're planting seeds, right? We're chanting, uh oh, we're, we're doing whatever we have to do. And then we also have one foot here in the human experience, right? So, the manifesting part, guys, or we're playing in the realm of desire. Hi, Kimberly. It's it's like, that's not going to take up much of your day. That's like 1%, 2% of your day, right? We're not visualizing and saying affirmations and chanting to the moon and drinking alignment tea and putting crystals on our bras and jumping on trampolines. Like, we're not doing that all day long, okay? We have the current reality that we're living in right now, right? We have our family. We have our clients. We have our relationships, we have kids. This is a fire alarm going off. Like I'm still in my old apartment in the office right now. Um, <laughs> bear with me. But we have our family, we have our kids. Hello guys. We have our business. Like we, we got things to do in our business, right? So one side we have one foot in desire. We are playing in the quantum realm. We're manifesting. But at the same time, guys, we're here right now having life. Life is happening right now. 
right? And so what happens, guys, is during our life moments, it is our emotions and our feelings about feeling a certain way about life that takes completely out of alignment into the wrong like direction. We go from flirting with the universe, we're so excited, we're so grateful, we're having a good day. Oh my God, I manifested this, I saw some angel numbers. I'm gonna have the best launch ever. And then all of a sudden, life happens. Something bad happens and it just takes you out. You go from like, I love my life, I'm launching this new offer, I'm so grateful, more please universe, more please, and then boom, you get a curveball. You get something really, really hard and you start slipping out of alignment with your dreams and your visions and you're starting to not like life again, right? You're about to launch your new offer and boom, something really bad happens. And you go from so freaking excited and grateful that this is gonna be the best launch ever to that something happens and you feel so bad and you feel so angry. And then you start having all of these spiraling thoughts and you start thinking, oh my God, my launch is gonna flop. So here's the thing with our emotions. Okay, when we don't understand emotions, when we don't have any emotional intelligence, and believe me, most of us never learn this skill because in school, what they focus on is teaching you like the math, you know, the math that you're gonna have a calculator on your smartphone anyways, right? They're teaching you how to memorize the Great Lakes, which we have a smartphone. I don't know why they're making kids do that, but like we're taught how to read, you know, right? And these are all important things, but we're never taught like, how to handle our emotions, how to understand relationships, how to have how to have conversations with people, how to navigate when we're really triggered, right? So when we haven't been taught emotional intelligence, it is often our emotions that take us completely out of alignment. It's our emotions when we're feeling really angry because something had happened where we start spiraling in our head, where we completely get out of alignment with our dreams. And then we start pulling things from the quantum realm that we don't want. Now here's the thing, okay, as I know a lot of people hear this in Law of Attraction that it's like you're not allowed to have any negative thoughts, you need to be positive all day long, okay, that's a bunch of BS, okay, it is not true that if you have a negative thought or you're feeling bad, you're going to manifest something. We can have single thoughts about things, okay, like your thought does put a vibration, but it's the emotion that brings the charge, that creates that magnetic charge, right? So thinking bad things, like, isn't going to manifest them. But thinking bad things, like, and you're also feeling really bad on the inside and you're creating these worst case scenarios in your head while you're also so angry and so sad and so bitter. Hello, Amanda. Yeah, like if you sit in that state and you create these stories while you have these, like, this charge of anger, yeah, you're going to start pulling things in that you don't want, right? And it's not that we can't have these moments, it's that we don't want to get stuck in this energy too long. What we want to do is move ourselves up the emotional scale. And what we want to do is learn how to redirect our thoughts onto something else while we're having these deep emotions, okay, which I'm going to go into a little bit. I'm going to really help you guys navigate this. So glad I caught this live. I totally just did this. Yes, yes, yes. Amazing, right? So here's the thing about the human experience, guys. The human experience is about senses and feelings. Like, Truly, I think our soul came here because we want to feel things and smell things and touch things and kiss things, feel all kinds of emotions and, and, and get our, all our senses going, right? Our soul came to have this emotional, sensual experience. Humans, we're powered on emotions. We're powered on feelings. This is the human experience. So we need all of our emotions. Guys, if we didn't have sadness, we wouldn't know what happiness was. If we didn't have anger, we wouldn't know what joy and excitement felt like. We need the polarity of feelings and emotions. Otherwise, we don't even know what excitement and pleasure and joy is all about. We don't have the polarity of those, right? Here's the thing. You're supposed to have all kinds of emotions all day long, all the time as a human, okay? But it's not like you're not in alignment if you're always in the emotions of really stress and not feeling good. That's when you know you're out of alignment. But you're allowed to be in alignment and still have like sad days and get triggered and angry about something. It's okay to have those. Because first of all, all emotions are very temporary and actually they actually, an emotion actually only lasts like 90 seconds if you actually feel your emotion and let it process. But everything's temporary. Your emotions are temporary. Everything's cynical. Everything passes, right? One of my favorite mottos ever is whenever I get like triggered by something, or I feel like really bad and off on the inside, I breathe and I tell myself, I'm gonna be okay, this too shall pass. 
if you just feel your emotions and you don't compound them by making them worse because you start thinking crazy things in your head and creating stories and start thinking things of the past, they will just pass and you'll start moving yourself up the emotional scale tone, right? As humans, we're here to have all kinds of emotions. There is no such thing as a bad or a negative emotion. They just feel bad. Sadness is not negative. Sadness is not bad. It just feels bad. Anger isn't bad. Anger is not a negative emotion. It just feels bad on the inside. There are no bad or negative emotions. They just feel bad, but they're all necessary. Yes, we will be okay. Still need to remind on that. Yeah, that's still one of the things I say to myself all the time, all the time, right? So feeling bad, it's part of the human experience. And the thing is, Truly, if you just feel your feelings in a moment when you're really triggered and you just breathe and you don't react and you don't start thinking that the world is like over and you just breathe and you tell yourself, I'm having an emotion, this is temporary. If I just breathe and sit with this, it too shall pass. It too shall pass. Energy means energy, uh, energy in motion. It needs to cycle. And then when you feel it, you remove it, right? What we don't want to do, so we don't start manifesting things that we don't want from the quantum field, is we don't, first of all, we don't want to stuff our emotions down because we're just going to compound them, which creates disease in the body. But what we don't want to do is like start feeling and thinking even worse things and creating stories in our head to make ourselves even feel bad. You ever notice sometimes when you're really angry, you just decide to like, let's make myself even more angry. So I start thinking about things in the past that make me angry and get bitter. And then you start making things up in your head just to like get even more angry. You compounding that, sitting that in energy, making it worse, and also thinking things that aren't real, like you are going to start pulling things in, right? We do this thing when we're angry. It's like we, we start to try to make ourselves angrier. Like we literally will think of things in the past and it will make us more angry and angry and angry and then we bring ourselves lower on the emotional scale tone. And then we're so far away from our dreams and alignment that it's like, where did you go, right? Five minutes ago, you were so happy. You're like, I'm about to have the best launch ever. I got this new offer, the branding's epic. I'm so excited. And then boom, you get a curveball. something bad happens. You're so angry, you're so triggered, right? And you start thinking, oh, Carol in grade seven, that backstabber. I wonder if she's still happy right now. And you start thinking about her. And you start thinking and creating a story like, oh, I posted two days ago in this group program that I'm in. And I only got two likes. And that other girl, she got like 30 likes. Like, oh, no one likes me. I don't belong. I'm not enough. This sucks. Like, and you just spiral. You start making things up, right? And then, because you're in a manifestation, you're like, oh, no. <gasps> God, I'm angry, sad, and I'm creating things. And now you you realize that you've been sad and angry, and then you start thinking, oh my God, I'm so mad that I'm sad and angry. So then you start compounding more emotions, right? Because law of attraction says, don't ever be angry. You can't have a negative thought. Don't be sad. And now you're stressed that you just did all that, and you gotta go live in five minutes, and you're on a brink of a meltdown. This law just gotta fail. And the thing is, it will fail if you do it in that energy, that stressed energy, because you're already, you've already predestined it. I'm going to fail. So think about this. If you think you're going to fail something, when you show up on a live, how are you going to like actually speak? Your, your mindset is already in failure. You're not going to show up doing your best. And this is why, like, it's not about what you do. It's about like who you're being when you're doing it. So when you're showing up already thinking you're going to fail at something, you're not going to put your best foot forward. And everybody's going to feel that energy because people feel from you what you feel about yourself. That is the truth right? And then you're nowhere in alignment with your successful launch. We have this power, guys, like, and even, like, we have this pattern, even, like, powerful manifestors, we do this, where we just, we get triggered, we're in a bad place, you know, we're on our moon, and we, then we catch ourselves spiraling, and we're like, oh my god, I messed it all up, I messed the sequence all up, my launch is ruined, the day is ruined, the month is ruined, my life is ruined, right? And then we're so far from out of alignment, right? We're in Alaska now, like we're supposed to be going to Texas, like we're over there, right? Like we think we ruin it because we spiral a little bit in our, in our mind and emotionally and we messed it all up. And the thing is you didn't ruin it. You just took a little detour and guess what? You're allowed to take a detour and get back on the highway. You can get, you can get lost, but you can get back on the highway and turn back and get yourself back in alignment. This is personal power. But if you say to yourself, the day is ruined, the month is ruined, my life is ruined, and you stay like that, and for the next five days, you're just like a sushi roll on the couch, like, yeah, you're going to be pulling in things you don't want. 
because you're sitting in that energy and you're creating more things in your mind, right? So what's so important about this is like, it really does take guys like conscious effort, conscious effort to bring awareness to when we know, to when we catch ourselves spiraling and compounding bad feelings that are taking us completely out of alignment. When you catch yourself doing this, breathe, stop, and start to bring yourself up the emotional scale tone. And what the emotional scale tone is, if you ever heard of this, it's just like, just like the like the motions, right? So the top is like joy and excitement, celebration, gratitude, happiness, right? And then it's like boredom, sadness, depression, anger, and then it goes, you know, down to like death, basically, right? Destitution, right? So what we want to do, right? Because I talked about yesterday, but like the best time to rewire things is like first thing in the morning. You could do like write your affirmations. You can do some future pacing. You can do their visualization right before bed, do it too, because you're going to be in the subconscious. But we have 5% that we are conscious throughout the day. And so when you catch yourself, when you're in your 5% that you're thinking things that are not in alignment with what you want to be manifesting, you got to stop yourself. You got to interrupt it. If you feel like you're, if, if you're in a moment where you're so freaking triggered and something's happening, it's like catch yourself, catch yourself spiraling, and then be like, okay, everything's okay. This is going to pass. Let me go lead myself consciously and bring myself up the emotional scale tone, right? For the, and for me, honestly, and I'm going to give you guys some amazing strategies and tools, but one of the best things you can ever do to bring yourself back is the gratitude. Like I do a gratitude rampage is one of my favorite hacks. And what's that is like, you literally, you're like triggered, you're angry, you're sad, you got a live to do. So you're going to sit down, you're going to breathe and you're just going to rampage the things that you're grateful for. Because here's the thing, you cannot be in a state of anxiety and stress while at the same time being super grateful. Gratitude is also one of the most potent frequencies. It's one of the pot most potent frequencies, Chris, 100%, yes. And, and it's one of the most potent hacks to bring yourself back into alignment. So when you catch yourself, you're stressed, you're triggered, and you start creating stories or you're back in the past and you start thinking things that are not even there. Oh my God, my life is over. You need to bring conscious effort and start to bring yourself back the emotional scale tone, right? So the first thing I would highly recommend is you breathe, you feel your emotions and you, you dive into gratitude. Hello, Katie, Linda, thank you. I need this today. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. This is gonna be really powerful. This is gonna be such a good call, right? Like, so I literally do this. So I could be like in a state where I'm so off and so triggered and sad and I will stop, I will breathe and I will just start. I'm so grateful for my hands. I'm so grateful for my body. I'm so grateful for my legs. I'm so grateful for my health. I'm so grateful. I'm breathing fresh air. I'm so grateful that I'm free. I'm so grateful I'm healthy. I'm so grateful for my healthy kids and I will just go off and I will start listing all the things that I'm so grateful for that are amazing in my life. Because yeah, this that thing just happened right now and I feel really triggered and angry but I can bring my awareness to the fact that there are still so many things to be happy and joyful about. And so I will just start rampaging and you just go and go and go until you feel yourself lighter. Like I will just go and I'm so grateful for my clients. I'm so grateful for being live here. I'm so grateful for this phone. I'm so grateful for Facebook live. Like that allows me to talk to people around the world to have this business. Like, and I will just go and I will just rampage and then I'll feel myself a lot lighter. I bring myself back, I bring back the vision, I get myself back in alignment, and I move on with my day. Because gratitude cannot exist in the same state as you being anxious and really stressed. So that is the first number one thing tool that I do. Highly recommend you start doing this, and you should be grateful every single day, future pacing that stuff, because this is how we manifest. It's like the, it is a frequency of manifestation. It's like more please universe. I'm so grateful for this, more please universe, and so be it, right? So we want to bring ourselves up the emotional scale tone and back into alignment. One of the most other amazing things is like I said, we humans, we're here powered on senses and emotions and feelings. So you have all these senses as a human to help you boost your emotions so you can even go and look at something beautiful. Like you could go outside and like right now I'm looking outside the window and the tree is yellow and there's a red one and it's fall in Canada and it's so beautiful. Like how can I be angry when I'm looking at this beauty? Like that is amazing. Another thing I should say too is if you're ever really triggered and angry and like 
really in a place of like paralysis and like just really maybe you're having like a panic attack because I should have those one of the best things to do is to like breathe and look around and remind yourself that you're safe like that you're safe right because when we have a panic attacks it's like we literally are we are thinking that something's happening to us right now but nothing's happening to us we've created something so heavy in our brain that we've created the hall the heart's going the sweat's going right we're so stressed so one of the things you could do is just like Take a breath and look around you and notice, I'm safe, I'm okay, I'm safe, I'm safe, I'm grounded. So, like, so another, another thing you can do, okay, if you're like really anxious is like, you are okay. Nothing is happening to you right now, okay? So coming back to senses. So you could literally bring yourself up the emotional skill tone by looking at beautiful things. Get outside. If you have a sunny, beautiful day, go put your face in the sun absorb the vitamin D, the oxytocin, okay? Like whenever I'm like feeling stressed or overwhelmed, that's the first thing I do is I just go stand with my bare feet on the grass and I put my face to the sun and I just breathe. What better feeling is that? Like, right? Like it feels so good. And sunshine boosts your oxytocin, which is the love hormone, the bliss hormone, the hormone that makes you feel really good inside. It's the hormone that you get when you hug people. Yes, ground yourself, right? And another thing too is like, we know how the importance of nature, right? You know why nature is so important for humans and why it's so important for people who are often stressed and anxious is that the color green, guys, here's some science for you. It's like this is an anxiety hack, okay, for your brain, okay? Like humans, of all the colors that we have, humans see more spectrum of green than any other color. And of course that makes sense. Guys, like, do you really think, like we were used to be foraging and savaging in forests and living outside and now all of a sudden humans created these buildings with no windows and fluorescent lights and people came and look outside and they're sitting there nine to five in these fake artificial lights, you know, like, and we have evolved from jungles and foraging for food outside, being in nature, right? So. That's another amazing hack for you. If you work in a nine to five right now and there's like no windows, I know people have jobs like that. If you work in a factory, it's like, you gotta make it a priority that you get yourself into nature, like right after work, right before you go to work, get some sun on your face. You know, something that's really incredible too is like, you know, we're going into winter here and it gets dark around like 5.30 in Canada, it's wild, but like, you know, we're not gonna be walking outside in the greenery. So I have so many plants in my house you know, Adam's like, no more. And I'm like, yes, more and more's coming. So, but like looking at green things literally calms your brain down. This is why they also have green rooms in hospitals as well. Hello, hello, Rebecca, right? So get outside, get some plants, look at the color green, okay? Like green is so good for your brain. It will calm you down, okay? Get some sun in your face, get nature. Like you guys know all this, but this is like, it's funny. Like we talk about this stuff so much in personal development. Like you guys know all this stuff is good for you and we still don't do it. And we're, we're like anxious and we're out of alignment. And it's like, this is about conscious leadership. You have 5%. You gotta lead yourself back into alignment. No one else is gonna do it for you, right? So get sun on your face, right? I spent this summer buying plants for indoors. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I'm getting some more. <laughs> I love them. I love them. That's why I even have why always my backgrounds are plants. And I'm gonna have more of a jungle going on eventually um, because I want you guys to be looking at the green. It's gonna calm you too, right? So other senses we can get going to bring ourselves up the emotional scale tone, right? Like music. That's like one of my favorite things to relax to. I have this playlist and I'm gonna share it in the guide section. I did share um, books as well. And I'm gonna share some emotional intelligence books after this call as well. Um, but I have an amazing playlist. It's called Hazy, H-A-Z-Y on YouTube. Um, that's what it's called. And it has like, I don't know, they have all these instrumental music, but I don't know what it is, but there's some songs on there where I hear them and I'm like instantly so calm. There's this one track called After the Rain and another one called Light. The second I, I give you stress, and I'll put it on and immediately I'm like, <sighs> I feel so good. And I listen to and I calm and I feel safe and ground. And all of a sudden I'm like, all right, I want to go live now. And I'm excited. And I was just like so stressed and anxious. And I could just like bring myself back so fast. So I'll share that playlist. So what maybe for you, right? Like you can do homework today where you create yourself a playlist, a playlist for bringing myself up the emotional scale, to scale tone and bringing myself back energetically aligning myself back to my vision and my dreams, like lead yourself. 
right? And I will put, I will post this. I'm so grateful for that book list. I'm traveling in two weeks and purchased two and audible for the ride. Yes, amazing. Yeah, and Michelle, I'm gonna, because we're gonna talk about energetics, emotional intelligence, so I'll also post some books about that. I play frequency music during my facial services. Yes, yes. You know why I'm huge? I've talked about this before. I'm really big at listening to instrumental music and not really listening to lyric music. I, more or less, I'll listen to lyric music if I'm in the car with my kids, or maybe sometimes in a workout. But even during my workouts, like I will find instrumental music, instrumental, instrumental music to like artists like Kanye West. Like there's some like I, I can't listen to lyrics that are like pr programming my subconscious in the wrong direction. There are songs that brainwash you too, guys. Have you ever noticed your girlfriends who are always single and crying and calling men or cheaters are like listening to always like the sad cheating songs. It's like you just keep rewiring your beliefs that way. So yeah, it does take conscious effort, guys. This is why I don't watch the news. I, I try not to watch like movies and shows that are gonna bring me in the wrong direction that are gonna keep reaffirming that, you know, life is hard and struggle and the old paradigm telling me like, you know, women are evil, like all that stuff. Like I don't want that in my subconscious. So you got to have conscious effort about what you're consuming as well, because it just goes in subconsciously. When you're listening to music and you're watching TV, you're actually in theta state. It just goes in subconsciously. So if you're working on rewiring a bunch of old beliefs, but you keep watching the news about struggle and you keep watching movies about rich people are evil and you're trying to become rich and you're like, like, what's the point of that? Right? Like it's, you're trying to rewire, but you're still consuming it and not rewiring. That makes so much sense. Right? So I'm big on listening to instrumental music. Plus I'm a creative. I love like some of the content that lands for you guys that you love, or even the riffs that I come up with. I was listening to something instrumental and it just like motivated me and I could write, but if I'm listening to someone's lyrics, I, I, I can't, be writing like my thing and listening to something else. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, be conscious of what you're consuming, like really. And so your homework is like, you're gonna create a playlist that calms you back into alignment. You can call you can call it calming back to alignment. You can play it for your kids. One of the best way for your kids too, if you're kids, if you're a parent and your kids are like really anxious and hyper or like stress, like put music on and dance around with them. I swear to God, it realigns them and it realigns you and the house is calm and safe and it's all good, right? So we want to have conscious ever. It is our responsibility to bring ourselves back into alignment, okay? So you can spiral here and there. You can have a negative thought, but you don't want to stay there. You want to stay there for hours, for weeks, creating things because you will be pulling them out. So bring yourself back gratitude, get sun on your face, get in nature, like listen to music, get the endorphins going, go work out. Okay. Work out. Like if you guys follow me on my Insta stories, like usually before my workout or after my workout, I'll post like myself working out or something and I'll write energy first. You know why I say that? This is me leading myself to raise my energy. Before I go write content, before I engage with my clients or do anything in my business or be around my family, I take radical responsibility first thing in the morning to go work on my energy. So if I roll out of bed feeling really like, like I'm not going to be the best version of myself. I'm not going to write content from that state. So I take radical conscious effort and I go and work out and I get my endorphins going. Cause after a workout, I'm like, I'm high on life. I'm so happy. Let me write an amazing post and it lands it. Cause things that are done in the right energy always work. You know what I mean? Like I I'm better around my kids right? It is our responsibility to restore our happiness and our joys and bring ourselves in alignment. It is nobody else's. It is ours. That's why I say energy first, right? So if you know you're out of alignment, go lead yourself back into alignment. Hello, Hawaii. Hello, Sherry. I love you. I'm grateful for you here having an amazing conversation about energetics and bringing ourselves back into alignment, right? So I work out, I pump myself up, I get endorphins going, I'm aligned, I'm aligned, I'm creative, I'm inspired, I, I'm a better version of myself, okay? Like other things you could do, hug your dogs if you have pets, you know, go cuddle with your partner. Maybe you sometimes, if you're so out of alignment and anxious stress, go make love to your partner. Like sex, getting like the oxytocin endorphins going is so good for you. Like what do you need to do to get yourself back in alignment? What makes you feel the best? What makes you feel the best when you're down? How do you get yourself up? Like write it all out. This could be a part of your homework. Like what makes me feel the best? And then this is the stuff you're going to lead yourself through when you're out of alignment, when you're stressed, anxious, triggered, angry, you're going to go look at your playlist. You're going to go do those things. 
okay? You can make it like, you know what you could do in your notes in your iPhone? Like make a list of like, how to get myself back in alignment list. And then you're gonna go practice all those things. And you're gonna work yourself up the emotional scale, right? What makes you feel the best, okay? Like when you catch yourself spiraling out of alignment, <gasps> wait, I have a list. Let me go do some things that will help me get myself back in alignment. This is leadership. This is self-leadership, okay? This is the plan. You have to make conscious effort to bring yourself back in alignment, okay? So what do we do, though, if none of that works? Or what if we do if we're just in such a bad state that it's just like, I cannot listen to music. This, I don't want to go outside. It's not even sunny outside. What do I do, okay? So the first thing I always tell myself is like, I breathe. Breathing is so good. I tell myself I'm going to be okay. I always remind myself, and this is something you can teach your kids to and anybody else, but remind yourself of this. Like feelings are temporary. Emotions, energy, and motion. I just need to feel these emotions and it too shall pass. There is nothing wrong. I'm safe. I'm grounded. I'm okay. Okay? Other thing that I do is I let myself cry. Okay? Because crying is so freaking good for you, I can't even tell you how good it is for you. And honestly, can we teach more men and boys to cry too because it's good for you as well, right? Sometimes all you need when you're really triggered or angry or stressed just to get yourself back in alignment is having a really good cry, like a really, really good cry. Like that will release so much. Like how many times have you guys had those like really ugly cries you're like, ah! your life is over you have like one of those cries like for like eight minutes and all of a sudden you just stop because you're like holy i feel good i feel kind of like really silly now from that ugly cry but damn i feel so good you just release so much emotion you let your emotions run their course and guess what here's some more science for you after seven minutes of crying you release oxytocin the bliss hormone so your body is super it's amazing our bodies are so amazing. Like when we get cry, when we cry because we're upset, after seven minutes, our body starts to create hormones that make us feel good again. How incredible is that? It's good to cry. It's so good. Don't bottle up your emotions. Don't teach your boys that it's wrong to cry. It is normal. It's natural. We could do it, you know, behind closed doors. You don't have to do it in front of people, but it's good. It's good for you. Plus, a lot of compounded emotions that we trap because we don't release them is why we have so much disease and disease that, like, doctors can't even explain. It's all compounded emotions, right? The other thing we can do is, well, if we know we're creating impending dooms or really triggered, is to redirect our focus. So this is a really amazing tool, okay? So what do I mean by this? So you're really triggered. You try to do your list, it's not working, you're so out of alignment, you're, you're thinking really crazy things, you're stressed, so like, I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna bring something back from the quantum realm that I don't want, right? One of the best things to do is in that state, go continue to be sad, but go redirect your focus, meaning go watch a movie that's really sad. So if I'm really sad and I cannot get myself in alignment, I, I'm doing my list, I'm doing all my things, I'm putting crystals on my bra, <laughs> I don't do that, but like, you know what I mean? If I did, I did all the things, I drank my alignment tea and it's just not happening, I can't get alignment, I'm so sad. I even cried, I'm gonna go watch a really sad movie and I'm gonna direct all my focus on the movie and I'm gonna cry about the movie and I'm gonna think about the characters. I'm not gonna think in my head that bad things are happening to me that are gonna happen to me, I'm gonna think about the things that are happening to the actors in the movie. I'm redirecting my focus, right? Great movies to watch, like P.S. I Love You, Braveheart, My Sister's Creeper, My Sister's Keeper. Those three movies, like I'll watch them and I'll cry, and then I'll watch them, and then guess what? After the movie's done, I feel good. I'm not thinking crazy things in my head anymore. I get myself back into alignment. Uh, Carla says, I've had a lot of those cries in the, four, four, five, the, the past four weeks. Sorry, guys. Mm, getting better and feeling better. Learning to let go. Oh, I'm sorry. I love you. I'm sending you so many vibes. It's all going to come. All the healing. So, oh, you can also listen to, like, artists like Adele. Have you guys listened to Adele? Like, you listen to her and you're like, I think I just went through what she just went through in her song. Like, she's such an amazing storyteller. Her voice is so activating, right? So you can redirect your focus with your emotions but think about the actor the singer what's happening in the movie cry about that but don't sit there in really bad emotional states and think about all the worst case scenarios that could happen to you that's how we pull things in 
But if you can catch yourself and redirect and watch a movie, go listen to a sad song, go read a book about something sad that has nothing to do with your life, and you just feel your emotions, like, you're good. You're good. You're going to get yourself back in alignment. We get to redirect this. We get to redirect our thoughts and our stories to things that are completely unrelated to us. This hack is so powerful. I teach my clients this all the time. Try this, okay? Go cry. Go do gratitude. The point is you're allowed to feel bad. You can spiral, but when you catch it, you got to interrupt it. You got to redirect it. You got to bring yourself back up at the emotional scale because this is the thing. Once you start feeling better, the stories in your head get better. It's only when we're really angry that something just happened and then we start creating other things and we start thinking about the past and what this guy did and she did and did I get revenge on her? Like, it's that what we don't want to do. But when you catch it, you interrupt it, you redirect it, you move yourself up the emotional scale, you go do your things on your list, you feel better, you think better, you take better action. This is the kind of leadership that we have to do. It is our leadership. It is our responsibility to get ourselves back into alignment. Adele is definitely a great storyteller. She brings the true and genuine emotions out. Yeah, you almost think you live through her stuff, right? So she's one of my favorite people. If I've been like, if I've ever, whenever I should go through a heartbreak, I should always listen to her, right? But then I wouldn't start thinking, I'm always going to be alone, right? I don't say things like that. And I'm like, oh, Adele, you got me. Got to step up. Mwah. Love you. Love you, right? So redirect it, lead yourself, recalibrate, okay? So it is true though, like one of our biggest um, blockers to manifestation, guys, is our resistance to feeling good. And I wanna remind you, it is good to feel good. When you're feeling good, you are in alignment. <sighs> because also when we feel really good, that's the time that we take time to visualize, to take action to go do that live, to go make that post. When you do things in the right energy, they work. This is when we visualize, we dream, right? But you are gonna have many moments of stress, anxiety, things happening, curveballs happening, coming at you, challenges, tests, right? So you gotta lead yourself. And this is how you know when you're out of alignment. It's when you're stressed. When you're stressed in your life, you're vibrating at lack. And lack attracts lack. So catch it and recalibrate. You got tools now and you have mindset now stuff to really lead yourself back into alignment. Stress vibes equal not in alignment. Pay attention. It is about you're vibrating at lack. You can't manifest abundance and brilliant things in lack. Okay? So I've shared some stuff with you guys to help you really realign. Okay? But if you do want to do more emotional intelligence work, there are two programs. I know there's guys watching this. You can do badass mode, which is the emotional intelligence of discipline. But for the ladies, I have an amazing program called Goddess Code that is all about emotional intelligence. And we need to learn emotional intelligence. If we can't handle our emotional reactions, our triggers, then we are literally victims to our outside circumstances. We are victims of our environment. Because this is what happens. When most people get triggered, and they're feeling bad, they'll go blame a person that it's their fault that they reacted this way, or they'll blame a circumstance that it's their fault that they're having this big emotional reaction. The truth is, if something is in control of your feelings and your reactions that's outside of you, then you are a victim to your environment. You are a victim to other people. And we don't want that. We want to be in our personal power, always, always, right? And this is why I created God's Code, because it's like we need to heal things, traumas, like we're all generationally coded with defense mechanisms, with like all these patterns we don't want to do that bring us out of alignment. We punish people. We get so triggered and spiral. We fight with people. We take ourselves out of the game for a month and we're a sushi roll on the couch because we're depressed. And I want you how to understand your emotions, how to heal things, how to deal with triggers how to be a leader of leaders, how to be a magnetic woman, and have the best relationship. Ah, Goddess Code was amazing. Yes, ah, I love you, Jody. Yes, this, this is my favorite program for women. It's four weeks, you're live with me. Like, it's like eight modules. You also get um, three different bonus programs, the Body Code as well, which is also getting a, another module, um, which is gonna be launching in the middle of Goddess Code. Um, get the Art of Feminine Magnetism. It is, it's next level. Like, honestly, if I knew this stuff, that I know now in Goddess Code that I teach, my life would have been, I would have saved so much heartbreak and I would have been way ahead. I am who I am because of that program. So if you ever want to go deep on emotional intelligence, 
I will be launching that in a few days and you can inquire about it. I'll put some links to, but like, if you don't have the resources to do something like that with me, like go binge on my other master classes. There's another emotional intelligence one in there and like start reading books about it. Start like bringing awareness to your own patterns. Like, you know, it is our responsibility guys. Like there's a really cool quote about like, I gotta find it for you guys, but it's like about like, you know, someone bumping you and you spilling your coffee and you get mad at the person. But the thing is like, it's in the coffees representing your emotions where all of a sudden like your stress and you're bottling things up and someone bumps you and you unleash onto them. It's that's you. You got to learn to take responsibility for spilling the coffee. You don't need to go spilling your emotions on everybody because you don't know how to handle them. Like that's our responsibility. People get to bump us so we don't get to attack and punish and freak out on people. Right. Uh, Tony says, Oh my God. Yes. Right. Like, so this is going to be coming up and I will be going into a launch. You'll hear a lot about it. So let's dive into more some more manifesting stuff, okay? So we want to understand ourselves, we understand people, okay? Uh, oh, sorry, I thought I saw something here. Okay, so one of our biggest energetic blocks to our manifestations is our fears. The, one of the biggest feminine energy wounds is like the fear of disappointment. We fear failing. Fear of success, oh my God, what if I'm so big and I can't handle it? We literally we don't go after our dreams. We don't even take the time to visualize the big dreams because the biggest thing that blocks us is our fears about it. We're afraid that if we're big and we're great, that we're gonna be judged. We're gonna be misunderstood. We're gonna be disappointed. And the thing is, if the fear is bigger than the dream, the fear wins. But if the dream is bigger than the fear, the dream wins. We live in a time right now that it has never been easier to craft money from nothing. With the internet and social media, we have opportunities where like you don't need big fancy educations. You don't need to have a million connections. We can become entrepreneurs and sell whatever craft we have. You get to create products. You get to better innovate products. You get to be paid to be an artist, a speaker, a creative. If you're a good storyteller, you right now we have the most amazing opportunity to get paid for our own unique magic. You have more access to cr opportunities to craft for yourself than there never has been in the history of humankind with the internet and the social media. It's never been easier to craft your own wealth and build a life that you want that is exactly the way that you want it and have the freedom that you want. But still, we have these old paradigms and these subconscious beliefs that keep us stuck where we are because it's so scary to do something you've never done before. It is scary to start a business, especially if you have no evidence that it's gonna work. It's scary to make investments with no guarantees. It's scary to put all of your effort and energy in something and what if it doesn't work? Like one of our biggest, greatest wounds, especially as women, is the disappointment wound. Like, oh my gosh, what if I do all this and I hope for this and I dream about this and it doesn't happen? We don't want to be disappointed. Of course we don't want to be disappointed. Like, especially because all of us, we have all these childhood traumas where people have disappointed us. You know, your dad told you he was going to come to your rehearsal and he didn't show up. Your mom promised you to take you on a trip and she didn't follow through. Your grandparents and parents told you Santa will bring you everything on your list if you're a really good girl all year and you do your best to be a good girl all year and you literally get nothing that was on your list and he didn't deliver, right? We have been disappointed. We've been disappointed but the fact that like when you were a little girl and you're a little boy, you looked at your mom and dad like they were these gods on a pedestal and then one day they like say something mean to you or hit you and it's like, oh my God, they fall off the pedestal. Like that creates deep trauma. We have disappointment wounds as people, we do. And because we have these disappointment wounds, we try to keep them safe by not doing things that could possibly make us more disappointed, right? Out of fear of fear, out of fear of fearing disappointment, we settle for mediocrity in our life. We protect our disappointment wound instead of stepping in our greatness. And the truth is, every one of you is a match for greatness. 
and wealth and freedom, but out of fear of just being disappointed, out of fear of being too much, you are less. You are a match for so much influence and visibility if you decided to right now, but out of fear of being seen and taking up too much space, you shrink yourself. And you know you've done this. You've seen yourself do this. We tend to cut back out of fear of being too much, out of fear we might get disappointed. Like we want to be wildly in love with a man or a woman. We want to be wildly in love. We want to love with all our heart. But out of fear of getting possibly heartbroken, we love just a little bit less. We want to trust with all our heart. But out of fear of being hurt, we trust a little less. You want to have a successful launch and speak your truth and all of your power, but out of fear of being, dis being misunderstood online, you do a little less, you shrink a little more. We always do a little bit less out of fear of pain and disappointment. And you want to know what's crazy, guys, is that like all the things that like you're afraid of, if you do shine and you become great and you manifest all the things, it's like we're already experiencing those things right now, but on a smaller scale. All the things you fear, the things that you think that you cannot handle, you're already experiencing them right, right now to a lesser degree, right? What we're afraid of when we go for all of our dreams and we manifest them is that we're actually afraid of having more of the things that we already have that we don't want. Meaning, when you're afraid of being judged, and like at a big scale, it's like, the thing is, people already judge you. People judge you when you're confident. People judge you when you're quiet. People judge you when you're shy. People judge you when like, the people judge you in your mediocre life. Even if you shrink or small, people still misunderstand and judge you. You might be afraid of being misunderstood. Trust me, people already misunderstand you. <laughs> like you're, you're afraid of people dropping off. People already, you've already lost people in your life and you're okay. You're afraid of people projecting things onto you? Well, look at your life. You've probably already been projected onto all the time anyways, from people in your family, your friends, people online. We are actually afraid of the things we already have right now in this moment. What we're really afraid of, guys, is just having more of it, right? Because it's like the bigger you get, the more people have opinions of you, the more there's gonna be projections and misunderstandings. But the thing is, at a smaller scale, you've already experienced those. You are experiencing those, right? We're afraid of having more success because we're like, we're afraid of have people misunderstanding us more and projecting on us and having haters or people dropping off and our friends leaving us. We're afraid of the things we already have. We're just afraid of having more of them. But guess what? If you can handle it at this level, can you trust that your energetic capacity to hold more is going to grow. Because the thing is, even if you decide today that you're like, I don't want any more than I have. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm grateful. I love my life. I love where I am. I'm, I'm good. I'm content. Even if you remain content and you choose to live like a, a normal, safe, predictable life, you're still going to have pain. Like nobody in this life, <laughs> no human gets out of this life without pain. Even if you're wildly successful, there is still going to be pain. This is the human experience. We have all these emotions, things happen. So if you choose to leave a mediocre life, to stay small so that you can protect yourself from things happening, the thing is that bad things are still gonna happen to you. So you might as well go all in on your dreams and do the wild crazy thing and become the crazy person in the room because why not? Because you're gonna access more magic and you're gonna really see what you're capable of. So it's like, okay, I'm gonna go and invest in myself. I'm gonna start the business. Uh, as long as, as long as Alina, you can promise me there's nothing on the line and no pain. Uh, well, th there's going to be things on the line and possibly there's going to be some pain. Are you still in? Uh, I don't know. What kind of pain? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, you want to be wildly successful. You got to have a lot of personal power. If you only have circumstantial power, you're not gonna tap into the wild, unpredictable magic that you dream of, that you see other people do. The magic that you seek, the luxury, the wealth, the opportunities, the mind-blowing romance, the, the experiences you wanna have, they're all on the other side of like the fears. So you can always choose. I wanna stay in the paradigm of safety or I wanna stay in the paradigm of magic that could possibly have some pain. Are you in? Because both have pain. I'm in, I'm in. Starting a business, going live online, like 
investing in coaching, changing your life, launching offers, sharing your personal vulnerable stories, yeah, they're scary. But they're only scary because it's, it's something you've never done. Because you know what fear is? Fear is anticipation of pain. And as humans, part of our brain is still operating this reptilian brain part, which is constantly coming up with like impending doom scenarios that could potentially happen to us, which never really will, most of which won't, unless you sit there and you keep visualizing all the worst things ever and the worst energy, then yeah, you know, you're gonna bring that on, right? But most of them won't happen. Your brain is here to keep you safe. Your subconscious wants you to stay where you are because it doesn't, because the unknown is scary. And we sometimes confuse the unknown with like unsafe. No, it's not unsafe, it's just unknown, right? But we do need fear gremlins. Like we do need our brain to protect us from danger. There's a difference between danger and fear. Fear is your imagination creating things that could potentially happen, mostly which won't. And then there's, there's actual real danger, but you know the difference between the two. What fear really means is that we're like up to something new and we just don't know how to do it yet. So it's scary. What fear really means is that we're, we want something and it really matters to us, but we just like, we just don't know how to do it yet. So there's fear. What fear really means is that we deeply, deeply desire something. It matters to us, but we're like, but I don't know if it's going to work. So there's fear. Fear is anticipation of pain. So what I suggest is when you look at like your big dreams that you want to manifest and you start having fears that come up, like, oh my God, what if this happens? What if this happens? What if this happens? What if I die? Like, and you get stuck in paralysis, ask yourself these questions. Like, what is it that I'm really, really afraid of here? And maybe you'll be like, well, I'm afraid of being misunderstood. I'm afraid of my family not like not liking me anymore. I'm afraid of investing and losing money. I'm afraid of being disappointment, disappointed. I'm afraid of doing all this work and it not working out, right? Like what is the worst case scenario that could happen? Like actually write it out and then look at it. Do you think you can survive that? Like, and ask yourself, if this thing happened, can I handle the pain? Will I make it through if the pain comes? And 99.9% .9 of the time you can handle it. Trust me when I say this, like, you are never given anything you can't handle. The universe, God, source, whatever you connect to, like it doesn't send us stuff that we can't handle. You think God, universe wants to crush you and make your life miserable? No, but it sends us tests and challenges because when you ask for big things, it comes with big polarity. So it wants to make sure that you can handle a few little things along the way and that you don't quit, right? A lot of times that we get tests and challenges, it's usually when we start manifesting, we want to manifest something big, all of a sudden we get like a curveball, it usually happens, right? It's because you ask for something really big and the universe, God's source, wants to see if you can hold it, right? Because when you have a really big desire for a lot of power and influence and wealth and you want a lot of visibility, but then you freak out because you got a really hateful comment and you spiral out of your mind and you start saying, I'm not good enough. Like you have emotional work to do and the universe is showing you that. It's like, listen, Nancy, you want a lot of power and influence and visibility that comes with more opinions, more people misunderstanding you. Like if you can't handle a hundred people not liking you, I mean, if you can't handle one person not liking you, there's gonna be more at a bigger stage. So it, it sends us these little challenges so that you can see, okay, wow, wow, one comment really took me out of alignment. I really freaked out when I got a hateful comment. Okay, I guess I better do some more emotional work. I best, I, I got to do some more work to like grow my capacity to hold this. But it doesn't mean you're not cut out for it. It just means you got some work to do. You got some emotional work to do. And trust me, guys, like at the beginning, I used to think like the littlest things triggered me. Right. And now it's like, you know, you get bigger things and bigger things and some crazy things have happened to me in this industry. And it's like, I'm still here. Did it hurt? Was there pain? Yeah. But I brought myself back into alignment because the vision is more, more important to me than a few people misunderstanding me. And this is the world though. Like you're not going to always have people like you. That's not going to happen. Right. I don't even like the word haters. Like it just, it's just people who misunderstand you, right? People who don't like people who don't know you can't just like hate on you. They misunderstand you. They're ignorant of who you really are. So really, can you really get mad at that? Like a person sends you a hateful comment. It's like, you don't even like, they don't know you let it go, you know, and then work on your emotional capacity. 
trust that your emotional capacity to hold more pain and judgment and projections, it will grow. It will grow. But there's never going to be a point in your journey, whether you're chasing your dreams or being an entrepreneur, whatever it is, that you're not going to have no fears. At every level of success, there's going to be a new fear. And you got to just learn to walk with both. It's like you're in the drivers and the fears in the back seat. You're going together. Here we go. Okay. And then you got to work on your emotional intelligence. You got to come into goddess code or badass mode. You got to do some work on your emotional intelligence because the more the universe sends you more, more people, more money, more influence, more power when you grow first. When you grow your emotional capacity to hold more discomfort and pain and polarity, the universe will send you more. Like I watched a few clients of mine like when I started three years ago, I had a couple clients that ended up getting pregnant when we started our coaching, right? New levels, new devils. <laughs> so um, when I started my coaching career, I had this, like, I had two clients that were, like, pregnant, about to have kids, right? And they were learning how to grow their business, right? And I remember they were so scared. They're like, how am I going to do this? Like, how can I, like, have a newborn baby and grow this business? Like, I don't know, right? And then in a few weeks, the baby come, the baby came, and you know it was a little rough at the beginning. Every new mom knows, right? It's like, whoa, what's going on here? It's a new identity, right? It's 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 a shock, right? But guess what? What happens, mamas? Let me know. After a few weeks, your capacity to hold more responsibility, to hold the ability to stay up late and feed your child, like you navigated it, you adjusted, and you're fine, right? And that's what happened with my clients. Like the first few weeks were a little rough, but their capacity grew to hold more and they could eventually have a new baby and be growing a business, you know? And then they got pregnant again. And it was like, oh my God, how the hell am I going to do this again with two babies, right? And the second baby comes and they adjust their capacity to hold it, more responsibility to hold more grows. Their business grows too, right? We're so scared of more, like... It's like we desire more wealth and all this stuff, but it's like we're so scared of like the flip side, right? It's, but it's like even if the flip side comes, your capacity will grow. You will figure it out. It's like getting a new puppy, okay? It's awful at the beginning. You got to like take that thing out all the time to pee or it's going to pee all over your house. Like there's more responsibility when you get a puppy, right? It's hard at the beginning, but then your capacity grows. You get on a schedule, right? Like you adjust, you figure it out. Our capacity to hold things grows all the time. So if you want more, you got to grow your capacity to hold more responsibility. With more power comes more responsibility, right? When I think about three years ago, when I was like a single mom with the two little girls starting this business, I didn't even have support. Like my, my father passed, right? We're Polish immigrants. I just had my mom and she's still working like six days a week, right? And single mom, I had kind of like didn't I wasn't hanging out with friends it was just like a chaotic time in my life and I was trying to grow this business with these two little girls under four I was so scared guys like I was so scared there were times where I cried but I was like I'm gonna grow this I'm gonna grow this I'm gonna grow my emotional intelligence I'm gonna grow my capacity guess why I figured it out I adjusted I found sitters I became resourceful I took calls when my kids slept I worked on content and posts when my girls napped I figured it out I adjusted my capacity grew it always does so when you get sent a bunch of hard things, you're gonna be okay. Your capacity will grow, you will adjust, you will always figure out. Everything is figure outable. We're scared of our own success. We're scared of like, oh my God, what if I can't handle it? So you gotta trust, you gotta trust. And I'm honestly, guys, like there is no reason that you have the dreams and desires that you have if, the, if God, universe didn't give you the power and the gifts to see it through you just got to trust and you got to figure it out and you got to grow your capacity and work on your emotional intelligence you got to be brave and brave is i don't have fears it's like i'm so scared but i'm going to do it anyways that's what courage is the universe will never send you anything that you cannot handle trust that your capacity to hold more will grow and as you hold polarity more the more abundance you will be sent I gotta hop up, I'll catch the rest. Mwah! Love you, Jody. Trust that your energy will match your desires. As long as you stay in, plugged in, and you don't quit. Because all of the magic that you desire, the dreams you desire, the freedom, the wealth, it's all on the other side of your fears. 
One of my favorite quotes, and this is a quote that I should tell myself all the time when I started my entrepreneur journey, is like, the, the cave you fear to enter holds your treasure. And it's so freaking true. Everything that I've been scared to do, after I do it, three, two, one, I'm brave, it's like magic happens. I made the scariest investment. I remember making my first, like, that was like, I think it was $17,000 for my one-on-one -on -one coach for three months. Like, that was huge for me, for someone who was like only bringing 2K. Then on the other end of it, it was like, the clients came my next launch and it paid for all of that. And like, I, I can't predict that, but it's like you align, you become an energetic match. Like the more you become brave, the more the universe sends you magic. You gotta be brave. And, and honestly, you're going to be okay. Even if something doesn't work out, you are going to be okay. Whatever happens. Like, and let me ask you this guys, if you want to share in the comments, but if not, you can do this little homework with yourself, but like ask yourself, or write this down, you know, what are the worst things that have ever happened to you? And I want you to look at them and realize that out of all the worst things that have ever happened to you, you will realize they made you so much stronger. They taught you the biggest lessons. If you're a healer or a coach, those are the things that are your credentials. So in hindsight, you needed them to be where you are. They, they made you into who you are. Some of the worst things that have happened to you made you stronger. They shaped you into who you're meant to be. They taught you lessons, lessons that are helping other people, lessons that you might be telling on stage one day or in a book. We don't get things sent to us for no reason. There are things we're asking for, our soul's asking for, and we're being shaped into the person who can hold them. You're going to be okay. So everything you fear about becoming the greatest, biggest version of yourself, like maybe some things will be painful during that process and that journey. But then what? For me, every single time, and even in my business, because some of the, like, to be honest, some of the worst things that ever happened to me was like during the growth of this business, right? Literally, I thought I was going to like have anxiety attack and die. But like some of the worst things that have happened to me while growing this business on the back end, after I led myself through it, and I brought myself back and I navigated my, like I evolved, I grew, my business took off, more money came. And it was like, the universe is like, okay, you want big things, gonna send you a couple tests. Let's see how you navigate. Because the thing is, if you get sent a curveball and you give up, you give up. Why is the universe gonna send you power and responsibility and influence if little things send you off the deep end? It's like why I love telling the story about Walt Disney. Walt Disney had to have those 33 no's because if he got a yes the first time he went to a bank loan, it was that easy for him. Then I feel like the second there was an issue building Disneyland and building the brand, he would have just been like, screw this, this is hard. But 33 no's, it grew his capacity to hold more pain, to hold more discomfort, to hold that. And the universe is like, I'm giving you Disney because you are capable of getting 33 no's and not giving up. How many of you would you guys keep going to 33 banks? People said no. Like, honestly, I don't, I can't even picture people in this day and age getting rejected 33 times and still thinking that this is going to work. Most people are like, there's something obviously wrong with me. Like, the, like I'm not meant for this. You got to believe no matter what. And it's, it's wild to hear like that we go through these things, but then it's on the back end, you lead yourself through it. You get everything you ever wanted. Like, so... For Walt Disney, 33 knows he got a big ass test, but he never quit. He held the vision. He stayed aligned no matter what he believed. And the universe is like, you are the man who is going to have Disney, the big one of the biggest brands like all of us grew up on, right? So you are going to grow your capacity. Sometimes you will manifest things and they will come effortlessly and easy. And sometimes you're going to have to prove it. You're going to have to show up for it. You're going to have to. If you, if you want it, and if you not, if you don't, then that's okay, right? So what if people misunderstand you online? So what if people judge us? Like, okay, like I, I saw one of my clients getting upset because she, you know, she's celebrating, got a luxury purse and someone, you know, called her superficial. And it's like, is that true? Are you superficial? Or is that just one small part of you that someone judged on the internet? And really, what does that say? Who does that say more about them or you, right? Can you hold that? Can you hold someone having their own triggers and projecting onto their own money issues and not tone down who you are and not dim and hide and delete the posts because 
you can't handle the trigger and you can't handle people's triggers? Like, can you hold the projections of people, a person for a moment who's triggered in their moment and projecting onto you? Can you hold that on your way to your dreams? Because this is what it takes, guys. Or are you going to shrink and hide? Because if you shrink and you hide, then maybe scale down the dreams. Or you work on your capacity and you realize, okay, I, I have some emotional work to do here to grow this because I want big dreams. I can't stop thinking about it, Alina. It's all I think about. I want to be free. I want to create generational wealth for my family. I want to free my family. I want to do big things. Okay. So if people, one person is triggered and is really throwing you out of alignment, then you just have to work on your capacity. And if you work on it and you keep plugged in, you keep coming back, you will have everything you ever wanted. This is what it takes. Don't shrink and hide. Don't dim for people. Can you hold someone's trigger? Take it from me, guys. Like, honestly, you can be the nicest, sweetest, kindest, most helpful person, donate to charity, and you will still have so many people misunderstand you and project on to you and tell you you're an awful person. Like, you know, think Oprah, Tony Robbins, like Brene Brown, like those people get hated on too. Oh, this is what I need to hear. Judgment is a fear of mine. The thing of the judgment is like, it's such a, we're just being misunderstood. So can you look at it as like, this person is ignorant of who I am. They're judging this small part of me. They don't know who I am. So like, let's just let it go. Let's just let it go. It says more about them than it does about you all day, every day. Okay. So you can choose to stay in the old paradigm and live a safe, mediocre life nothing wrong with that but the thing is you will see that there's still a flip side to that there will be still people who misunderstand you and judge you anyways you get judged for being shy you get judged for being loud you get judged for being quiet you judge for being um whatever like too tall too like it doesn't matter you're still gonna get judged so play big play big Play big because why not? Because if you play big and can hold all the judgments of people, do you realize the stuff that you can access? Like people that are celebrities, like those people have a lot of emotional capacity to hold a lot of that because people project onto them all day long. But their vision and their alignment to what they want in their life and to what they want to create is so strong that they just hold it for the moment and they let it pass. Mm, uh, yep, yeah, because they see us through their lenses, so we, so we better do what we want, 100%. Like, it's just like, the thing is like the old paradigm, it's like your parents and everybody in mainstream will tell you, like, honestly, like, if it's like people are being mean to you, or you're uncomfortable, it's a bad thing. Like, pain is not normal, negative emotions are not normal, this is mainstream telling you this, like, if it's painful and it feels uncomfortable, then you probably shouldn't do it. That's what the world tells you, right? And going in on your dreams and investing, and if you're an entrepreneur, like it's very uncomfortable sometimes. Investing like $1,000 in a coaching program when you've never made a penny in your business, like that's uncomfortable, but it's not unsafe. And there's nothing wrong with feeling fear. Going live is so uncomfortable, but it's not unsafe. We, we mix the two. We think that uncomfortable means unsafe. It does not. Sharing your offers for the very first time, it's uncomfortable. But in the uncomfort and in the pain, this is where we evolve. This is where we grow. This is where we grow our capacity and then the universe sends us more. It's kind of like going to the gym and getting toned and leaned out. Yeah, it's uncomfortable to lift heavy ass weights. You're tearing literally muscle, like little fibers and muscles, right? Yeah, it's uncomfortable to push yourself to go for an extra mile on your run. But in that uncomfort, in that unpain, that's where you grow the most. That's where you evolve. That's where you become stronger. Those little micro tears at the gym from lifting weights, that's where you grow the muscle, right? You get stronger, more flexible, more toned, more leaned. The uncomfort leads to incredible things, guys. It really does. Like when you go do a leg workout, you get a little scared. I get a little scared. I'm like, this is going to be painful and uncomfortable. I know tomorrow I'm going to have a hard time sitting on the toilet. And I'm going to walk like a weirdo for two days. But in that pain, my legs will be more sculpted and stronger and changed. And I'll be more confident and I'll have results. Uncomfort leads to results, guys. 
The same thing for you going for your dreams, investing in yourself, hiring a coach, going live. Like it's uncomfortable, but guess what? That's where you access your magic. That's where you find out what you're capable of. That's where all your next level is. You got to be brave and you got to trust that your capacity to hold more discomfort and pain, it will grow and it will grow and it will grow. And the more that grows, the more the flip side comes to you, the abundance, the bliss, the pleasure, the wealth, all the things. Because every time you choose your current predictable safe life because you want to avoid pain, the thing is you know you're always going to be choosing boring. When you choose safe, you know you're choosing boring. But that's okay. That's what Netflix and chill is for. That's what we have substances for. Like, that's what we have games and candy crush for. It's what drugs are for and porn's for. Like, that's what that's for. When you're bored, you do all those things. Right? So you can stay where you are. There's nothing wrong with that. But you're still going to experience pain. And the pain is boredom. We live in a world of duality, guys. There's polarity all the time. Like, there's light, there's dark, there's feminine and masculine energy. There's what if it works, what if it doesn't, what if it does, what if it doesn't. Like, there's always polarity in everything. I'd rather take my chance and risk accessing the most abundance, even if there's a little pain, rather than staying mediocre, wondering of what I could be capable of and being really bored. In everything, there's polarity. There is a flip side to everything. There is a flip side to you being safe and comfortable, and that is boredom. There's a flip side to taking risks. The flip side is what if it doesn't work? The flip side to having influence and visibility and power is people misunderstand you and project onto you and judge you. The flip, the, the flip side of having big, wild success is, oh my God, what if I can't handle it? It's two, 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 trust. This is my trust angel numbers, by the way. So if you start seeing them, trust you're in alignment. It's gonna put that seed there, make a wish, okay? There's a flip side to everything. You take a risk, there could be pain, but, there, but the risk could also lead to magic and wealth and abundance and things you never thought possible. If someone could guarantee no pain on our road to our dreams coming true, then everybody on this planet would have what they wanted. The possible flip side to having everything you ever wanted is luxury, freedom, financial freedom, influence, bliss. But that also potentially come with a flip side of stress, pain, anxiety, lots of stress and anger. Do you still want to play here? Red pill, blue pill, red pill, blue pill. Do you want to play in the quantum field, manifesting unpredictable magic, even if there's potential pain? Or do you want to stay in the current pattern? Predictable paycheck, predictable life, stay safe. But the flip side is that you're so bored. And the flip side of that is that you always know for the rest of your life you're going to be living with the fact that you know you could be doing more. You know that you could be capable of more. That's what you have to live with when you choose safe. Two two was the one I chose my sign. Yes, love that. It's amazing. Right? So every time you choose to stay safe and predictable, you're going to have to live with knowing that you could be doing more and having more and being more. Every time you choose safe, you know you're chasing, you're choosing boring. And again, I want to say, like, there is nothing wrong with this. We need people that want to just work nine to five, get the education, get married and die. Like, people want that lifestyle. Some people want to stay safe. It's okay to live a boring, safe, predictable life because... That's why mainstream has created Netflix and substances and all these things. And it's okay. Most people do it. You can have that life. But I know that if you're here having this conversation with me, I already know that you want more. And I know that you know you're capable of more because you wouldn't be here. So all you have to be is brave, which means you choose fear. You have to choose being uncomfortable. You have to choose that there may be potential pain. But the flip side is that you have everything you've ever wanted. Which one are you going to choose? This is the life of an entrepreneur. This is the life of a, a dream chaser. Do you want it? The possibility of having everything you ever wanted, maybe a little bit of pain. I'm in 1000%. I choose risk and a little bit of pain and discomfort over being bored every single day. Like I am one of those people, I do not want to Netflix and chill unless I'm honestly having like such a really bad day or I'm just tired and it's just been a long week or something, right? But like, I like never want Netflix and chill. I actually, I actually laugh because someone shared, I think it was Cynthia, she shared 
uh, yesterday's class and she's like, this is my Netflix and chill. And I laugh because I'm the same way. I'd rather listen to like programs and read a book or a podcast, something that expands my consciousness and teaches me something than just watching Netflix and chill and news and substance and doing substances and playing Candy Crush. Like that for me, like I don't like being bored. <laughs> I don't like being bored. So I am over here. Let me know if you're the same. I choose discomfort. I choose to eat fear every day over being bored. I want to experience having it all. I am, I want to have all the emotions, the highs. I want to, I want to like access emotions that I've never accessed, right? Even if that means that sometimes there's going to be uncomfortable parts on my journey, but I choose that because I already know that if I choose a safe, predictable, not risky life, the boredom is going to cause me so much pain all day long. Chris, yes, see, we are aligned, <laughs> right? You know, what we got to do is like, first thing I want to say again, I said this to you guys again, but like, don't mix fear and feeling uncomfortable with being unsafe. Like the, the mainstream will teach you that it's like, you're unsafe. Don't do that. If you're uncomfortable, it's not. No, don't tangle these two frequencies. Being uncomfortable leads to magic. It's just like tearing muscles in the gym. It leads to the lean, long legs, the little bit of pain. That's like what like the one hour like once a week for that like come on this is the old paradigm mainstream doesn't believe in what we believe in that you can have mind-blowing unpredictable magic that you can create things from nothing that you can create your own wealth mainstream will tell you it's uncomfortable if it's uncomfortable it's unsafe this is what mainstream will tell you what's your plan b what's your plan b alina what do you mean you're just going to manifest clients and do this What's your plan B? Like, what if it doesn't work? You, you tell your dad about your plan for your entrepreneurial business or you're going after your dreams. You tell grandpa and your dad and, and they're like, what? Like, what do, you, what do you mean? You're gonna like manifest, what are you talking about? Are you in a cult? Are you okay? Are you on drugs? Like, what's happening? Like, is this a pyramid skin? No, Alina, I'm gonna learn from her about goddess coding. She's gonna teach me emotional intelligence. I'm gonna be okay. But what's your backup plan? This is mainstream. What's your backup plan? What's plan B? What if it doesn't work, right? Because mainstream, especially like your parents and your family, like the people who don't get it, and it, dis and it does, trust me, sometimes I'll talk about things and I still sometimes from some people, when I started this business, nobody believed me. My mom was like, I love you, I believe you, and I'm scared about you, right? Like she was just worried, but she still supported me. But everybody else is like, okay, like what if it doesn't work? What's your backup plan? Right? And they, it's because they don't want us to be disappointed. They don't want us to get hurt. Your parents don't want you to get hurt. They, they want you to go get the education and do the nine to five and have the predictable stuff because they want you to be safe, right? So yeah, your parents are not always gonna be on the bandwagon. They don't want you to be disappointed. They don't want you to be hurt, right? And, they, and they're gonna say things to you like, how long are you gonna try this for? Like before you should settle down and probably get a real job because honey, like I don't want to squash your dreams, but becoming a multiple six figure, seven figure, eight figure online entrepreneur, like that, that doesn't happen to most people. I don't want you getting disappointed. Like what's your backup plan? When are you, when are you gonna go back to school? When are you gonna get a real job, right? You tell, your, your, you tell people your big dreams and it's like mainstream paradigm. We'll respond to you with like, what's your backup plan? Be careful, it's probably not gonna happen to you. Sorry to burst your bubble, sorry but not sorry. Like. This doesn't happen to most people. Your dad goes, listen, honey, like I had big dreams too. I decided to be a multimillionaire. I decided to do big things, but like the economy is never stable. There's recessions and like you, you need a lot of connections and you need a big education. Like, sorry, babe, like I love you, but what's the backup plan? Like, when are you gonna settle down? Like, blah, 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 blah. like you got, right? <laughs> Don't let them suck you back in. This is what majority of the world believes. Right? This is why you have to put yourself in containers and conversations like this. You've got to be reading books. You've got to be listening to people who think differently. So you get out of the subconscious patterns of the rest of the paradigm. Right? Because people are waking up. But only a small portion of the planet believes in what we believe in. That magic and miracles are like our state of being. Like there isn't that many crazy wild ones like us. So you've got to stay in conversations like this, right? Because otherwise mainstream paradigm people will suck you back into the matrix, right? And it's going to be boring and it's full of control and it's hard and like, ah, and then you try to realign your thoughts and it's like, 
it's hard when you're surrounded by evidence of the old paradigm like it's they're showing you how hard it is and things aren't happening in the world so you got to plug yourself into conversations like this because all of us are surrounded by evidence especially what's happening in the world that will bring you back into scarcity and lack and you'll want to stay safe don't do it at the start of my career even when I didn't have money like I invested in group programs I put myself in masterminds I, I hired a coach because Otherwise, I had nobody in my surroundings who understood and got what I was about to do. They didn't get it. I didn't have all these people cheering me on. You know what I mean? They were worried. They were worried about where's my plan B? Like, what am I just going to go get a real job, right? Like, so even if you can't afford programs, like, binge on free masterclasses. Go get books, you know? Get into self-development. Go read manifestation books about quantum physics, right? Have a book list for you guys, right? get into group environments where people are having these kinds of confrontation it will it will help you rewire things in your mind so fast so fast right this work guys it takes conscious choice to change your beliefs you got to catch yourself in every single moment interrupt when you're out of alignment you got to shift it you got to make routines and this, this doesn't take that long like five minutes in the morning just to write a few things that you're grateful for or something that you want to manifest close your eyes see yourself doing it like at the end of your night just list off a few things you're grateful for maybe you have a hypnosis you don't have to get so hardcore but can you like allocate like five minutes in the morning five minutes at night to this and then when you're in your waking state and you catch yourself in like limiting thoughts and thinking things that are not in alignment can you interrupt it and realign yourself can you work your emotions up to start feeling good and getting yourself back in alignment when you're triggered like we have five percent i don't know who comes up with these statistics how does it the 95 and the five like i don't know but five percent they say the neuroscientists that's all we have to rewire the 95, the 95 that is full of the things that you're currently manifesting. When you look around your life and the people you're around and your body, it's all a reflection of what's happening in the 95. So you gotta catch it and you gotta rewire it. So when you hear yourself, don't even say it. When you're about to say something limiting, it's like, what's a better feeling thoughts? What's something right now that I can look at that's beautiful, that's gonna align me with? Can I look at my vision board? Can I do a gratitude? It's our radical responsibility to realign ourselves. Always. Nobody else's. It's ours. So use your 5%. When you catch yourself, you stop it. This is how we rewire slowly and slowly and slowly. And try those experiments in the guide section, guys. Okay? So this wraps up day two. We are going to still have a celebratory. If you guys have questions, hope you guys can come on the live. I'm going to post it in a couple days. I'm going to do a Q&A. We're going to do the tuition draws. So you guys get to have a chance to win a tuition. Um, and I do want to talk about a couple offers that are coming up because Goddess Code is going to start November 8th. This is a program only for females, but I do have another emotional intelligence program that's open to men. It's called Badass Mode. That's going to be running in January. We do emotional intelligence, but in the realm of integrity and discipline. Goddess Code is emotional intelligence, but it's in the realm of feminine energetics. We're going to become more powerful manifestors. We're going to teach you how to be magnetic. I'm going to teach you about relationships, about men, about healing things, becoming so magnetic. That program is why I am that way. And you get four bonus programs. Body Code is going to also be launching a new module. So if you already bought that program, it's 222. You get to keep it for life and any updated things. Um, and then Soulful Sales. My sales program on money, on organic sales online, launching is gonna be starting in December as well. So I'm gonna be posting some links and stuff like that over the couple, next couple of days. If you guys wanna wait for the draw to see if you win a tuition or get 50% off, you can wait for that. You will see me going into a launch. I'll be talking about things. Um, I do have a landing page with some um, descriptions. But like I said, Goddess Code November 8th. Soulful Sales is gonna be in December. I don't have a date yet. And then Badass Mode is gonna be in January. What was the hypnosis app? Oh, Creation Frequency. Creation frequency. Uh, yeah, I have it. I think I still have it on here. Hmm, I'm going to have to find it on here. But it's called Creation Frequency. And actually, there's a really awesome book called, I think it's called Creation Frequency. Awesome manifestation book as well. But I like that hypnosis because it has like categories, right? So sometimes I tell people like you can create a hypnosis where it's just like, 
a general one where you just have like you know i'm an excellent receiver i love money I like you can just put a whole bunch of um mantras and affirmations and beliefs that you want to rewire with or you can download creation frequency and what i love about that app and i'm sure there's other apps is that it has like subcategories so it'll be like relationships so you record yourself for eight minutes affirmations that you want and the things that you want in a relationship then there's like a money one there's a health one right so like if you want to like take a step by step and you want to work on one thing at a time, which I always recommend too. Um, you start with like relationships, right? And then you record yourself. And then again, right before bed, listen to it. You can write this stuff out too. You don't have to always listen, but in the morning, what I should do, I should press snooze for five minutes, plug in my AirPods, listen to my hypnosis, and then I get up for my day, right? Which is, which is, with, what is crazy about the subconscious is that like, Sometimes like you're listening to it and you're like, you're not believing it. But the thing is when you're in theta state, it's going in anyways. And so that's why I say like, you do this stuff on your own, but in your waking life, make it a conscious effort to pick up a book and read it for five minutes about something different. Come into my guide section and binge on my masterclass. They're also on my YouTube channel. I always have more masterclasses. There'll be another one in December as well. Um, have conversations. If you can join programs, like, and you want to be in my energy for like four or five weeks, where we have next level conversation, more tools, like there's programs coming, like, but stay in this guys. It takes conscious effort. Like I said, like everywhere you turn, someone will show you evidence of the old paradigm and evidence does create manifestation. So when you keep seeing people around you really struggling and I'm seeing it too, guys, like with my family and stuff like that, I, I have to like plug myself in my mastermind. I'm in money programs and I'm watching women celebrate crazy success and I'm watching people buying and I'm want, and I'm celebrating people buying from me because the outside world keeps telling me that like people aren't buying, there's recessions, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to talk about that. So I plug in. So I keep expanding myself that like, no, there's another world here, but we got to put ourselves in it. That's the thing. Conscious effort. Um, calling in goddess code. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I love you so much. Um, so today is, is it Thursday? No, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. So, yeah, I'm thinking Friday. I'll give you guys another day to listen, to tag, to share. Um, and every time you share or post, you get an entry into it. And I'm going to post a time. It'll be probably Friday or maybe one one one. one one We'll probably do it. I'll come live. We'll do the draw. And if you guys are able to come live and you want to ask questions or shoot the shit for a little bit, I love interacting with you guys. We can do that as well. Um, and then for those of you who are done and finished until the next masterclass, I will see you guys in December. I'll see you on the webs. And you guys will see me going into launches. So if you have any questions, just let me know, okay? I love you guys so much. Have a beautiful day. I am calibrating us all to magic and miracles. I'm planting seeds. Do this work. Do this work for yourself. Release your family. Release your kids. Like, come, and, and something else I want to mention, like I said before, repetition, the master of skill. Come back and re-listen to this. Especially this one. This is a really good one. Like, the stuff about the emotions, like, this is why like I can talk anything about manifest. I can give you guys all the manifestation hacks. Why I create programs, the programs are for the human because it's the human stuff that always takes us up on alignment, right? So come back and re-listen to this module. It is important. Like move yourself up the emotional scale, lead yourself. Um, share tag where? So you can share like the day one video because you can't share out of this group. Um, and then you can um, just take a picture of this or just take the graphic and you can um, post it and tag me on Facebook, on LinkedIn, or um, Alina Grayson Coaching on Instagram. And then every tag will be put in a draw and we're gonna do the draw on Friday. And then if you guys can show up, I'm thinking one, one, one. I'm not gonna 100% put that down yet. It's either gonna be one, one, one or two, two, two on Friday, but we will do the draw. And if you guys wanna pop up and talk, we can. But I always go live throughout the month. So there'll be other chances that we can catch up. Thank you for all the new people in my world. I'm so happy you're here. I hope you take the time to go binge in the guide section. There's some other awesome masterclasses as well. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking. I feel like I'm sort of pastied right now, <laughs> but I love you guys. Thank you for everything. Thank you for your time. And again, regardless if you wanna be in a, a, the tuition draw, if you feel like somebody could really benefit from listening to this information, like add them to the group, tag them in these videos, like 
I feel like this is these are the conversations the world really needs. And if we all start, imagine we all take radical responsibility for our emotions and our feelings and our alignment, like the whole world would change. Too many of us are waiting for circumstances to change. And that is the paradigm of no power. And we are living in the power in the paradigm of like, I have personal power, I create things, I bring myself in alignment, I'm radically responsible for my happiness and joy. Yes, claim it, claim it, claim it. Okay, love you, love you. I will see you guys on the interwebs. <laughs> Bye, guys.